file that we created in our previous session. To do that, I am using the same file. I save this file as create or file system objects. FSO is the normal name used by QTP or most of the people. Now, after I created this file, I want to open the file and I want to read from the file. So, to read from the file, first is I create one more object for reading the file as if I am opening the notepad in another object that is F3 now. So, F3 using F3, I am going to open that object. F1 is mandatory. Without F1, I cannot use F3. So, I am setting F3 now. Using F1, F1 dot, what I like to do, open the text file. Which file you want to open? I like to open the file that I have created. So, I am creating or opening now file that I have created. When I say open, immediately the question asked is, in what mode you like to open the file? There are three modes available. One for reading. If I like to read from the file, I can open it in the read only mode, that is one. One indicates that I am opening the file in the read only mode. Two for writing. If I like to write onto the file, then I can use it as a read only, sorry, two. Two means I am opening the file in the write mode. There is one more mode called append mode. Append the value is eight. So eight is used as append mode. Please note, I have not created one or two or eight. It is how defined by Microsoft. Neither QTP nor VB has a control on this. The class scripting.filesystem object, he understands one meant means it is for reading, two means it is for writing, eight means for appending. I hope you know the difference between the writing and append. Write means the entire data content are replaced with the new content. Append means entire data content is intact then I append the record. We will see more of this in our projects. Now, set open, sorry, set F3 using F1 open the text file. The file that we want to open, put it first. Then I like to open it in the read only mode. So I use one now after this. Now I open the file. It is now available under F3. So when I open the file, what is my next job? I would like to read from the file. There are several ways I can read. I can read the entire content of the file into a variable. That is one possibility. Another possibility is I read line by line. So if I want to read all the content in one shot, say message box, F3 is the object which has that open text file, read all. So read all is the method to read all the content of the file into, now message box, I can assign that into a variable as well. Now I run the script, see how this line is effectively working. I Next I have to throw close, f3.close. Then I need to set F3 as nothing, releasing from the memory. This is the syntax to release it from the memory. I am executing this now. Now can I execute only from line number 13? Answer is no because you need F1 object. Without F1 object, F3 is not going to work or line number 13 going to fail. And Fortunately or unfortunately, we declared F1 at the beginning of the statement. So I need to execute from the line 1. Now, since I made it as a true in line number 4, he treats 
recreates that file. So you can see the execution pointer. He is now executing. He is creating the lines inside the file. Now he closing. He is going to close the file. He is closing now. He is moving on to releasing the object of F2. Now F3 object is created using message box read all command. He is now reading all the content and it is displayed to you. This is how you read all the content of the file. Sometimes you may not need to read all. I like to read line by line. If I like to read line by line, what is my possibilities? I now command this message box. This is to read. I'll say to read all the lines in we use read all method. Right? Now to read line by line. To read line by line, first is I need to know how many lines are there in that object. Without knowing how many lines are there, I cannot read line by line because where I have to end. If I like to know how many lines are there, how do I know which property is holding that? Because there should be some property on F3 object which has to tell me that this is the total number of lines. As you said, as you seen in the list box, dot items count is the property from which I know how many items count are there in the list. Here, what is the command to know how many lines are there in the notepad? So to do that, if I don't know what is the method I need to use, Simple way is use breakpoint and try to debug that. If you are not able to find anything, the next step is going through the help. If you are not getting from the help, then the next step is googling out what is available. Right? This is how you approach. First is we try to debug. So I now applied a breakpoint executing the script. Now breakpoint is set on set F3 object. So he is going to wait under this point. He is waiting now for my command. I now go to view debug viewer. So debug viewer you can see now F1 is an object that is a file system object. These are all the methods. There is no values. These are all the drivers collection. So these are all the collection of objects and methods. So using this F1 object, I am created now F2 object. Now I am creating F3 object. F11 is going to create F3. Why F2 is empty is because I released the object from the memory in my previous step. Now you can see F3 is an object created. If I execute line number 18 now, it will close. So I don't want to execute. I need to understand my aim is what is the property that I need to use for retrieving lines, line count. If I see that there is no line count, but what he says is where he stays now, current line number. And there are two methods available. One is called at end of line. Another is called at end of stream. Whether control character is passed at the end of the line, then I will get at end of line. If my pointer is touching the end of line, I will get the control as yes true. If it is end of stream means if I have a character, I you come to the end of the character, then end of stream becomes true. So only these two properties are available for me to use and it is a boolean type. There is no other properties available for me to use to find out what is total number of count, number of lines available in that notepad. So this prevents me using for loop because I cannot use now for loop. So what else is possible? 
I am now trying to use end of line method. End of line method, I am now assuming when I reach end of line, I have now come to the last line. This is my assumption based on which I am taking my approach. So if until I reach end of line, I want to be in the loop, continue to retrieve the data from that notepad. This is what I am trying to now apply my logic. To do that, I stop my run. Okay, before I stop, if I put F11, you can see now F3 object is closed. It is closed. I am now setting, clearing the object from the memory. You can see that object is released from the memory within the script. So I now finish. So run is completed. What my next job is? After F3, now I understood there is a property called end of line. That end of line is what I need to use. So I go to a do while loop because do while I have the condition satisfied. If it is satisfied, you come out of the loop. If it is not satisfied, you be in the loop. Do while f3 dot at end of line not equal to true or you can say equal to false. Till then you be in the loop. That is what I am instructing. I say message box read line. Now, sorry, f3 dot without f3 read line is of no use. So f3 dot read line. I am now reading line by line till when I read the line till at the end of line method appears with value true. Till then I continue to be in the loop. This is what I am trying to instruct. So I have a breakpoint. I now run the script. See how debug viewer showing the values. He will wait for me when he reaches set F3 command. During that time we will see how to how it works. Now you have come to F3. I click on F11. Now you can see F3 is set. Now at the end of line is false. Since it is false, he will be inside the loop. So now he is reading the line. He is going to read the line. Still the status remains same. After he reads the line, you can see now we are learning QTP is a message box. Now he is still inside the loop. Now you can notice now line is 2 and column is 1. Column we have, we don't have a split in the column. So column is 1, line is 2. Column is nothing but characters. Here each character is a column. So now F3, I move to the line line, second line. I am selecting F2, F11 now. F11 through online it has come, message has come. Now you can see the pointer has moved to line 3. You can notice now. I am again reading this line. Once after read line message box gives back the control, you can see line is moved to 4. You notice that. Now line number is 4. I now select again read line. He is now read the line and this is seems to be the last line for us. I say now OK. Now you see the at the end of line control. It has now said it is true. So at the line, at the end of line property is set with a value true. If it is true, what do you want him to do as per my script? I am coming out of the script. That is loop. So it has ended the loop. This is the way I control. Now the challenge here is if I have a blank line, what I need to do? How do I manage that? That is you have to look for ways to manage it. Right? Very, you have to be very careful 
because we don't have at the end of file. We don't have a property called at the end of file. AEOF they call it as. That method is not available. Now he is closing the object. He has finished the object. So how do I ensure in case if I have a blank line I want the loop to be used but I need to ensure the loop doesn't end abruptly. I am giving that as an exercise to you. I want you to explore the possibility during this weekend. Try to use the methods, conditional statements and arrive how you can manage it. Right? So I, I don't get into that now. So this is how I open the text file. I debug how the objects look like and I use the property f3.readLine. This is how I read from that line. Once I read it, I can use VBScript's concatenation methods. I can concatenate, split, etc. I can do now. That is all options available. We will see more of this in the object model reference as well. With this, we are now coming to an end of 